Well, Rhonda, what are you doing now? On the road again to the next campsite, Brickwood Caverns. On our third campground in a row on the Alabama trip. Yes. So last night, last two nights we stayed at Lake Loreen, uh -huh. which I think we both really liked. Yeah, it was very nice. It was very pretty. Ronnie even got up, well we got up early this morning before light and Ronnie went outside and took a picture of the moon over the lake. Yes, it was just a quiet campground. It was just beautiful. In the early 1950s, Eddie Rickles went caving with his Boy Scout troop. They liked the area so much that Mr. Rickles bought the property along with Sonny Arwood. The Boy Scouts were integral to getting the cave open. They helped to dig, blast, and move rocks so people could visit it. It was named Rickwood Caverns after the owners and opened in 1954. Twenty years later, it became a state park. The park is 30 miles north of Birmingham, which was an iron and steel town from its early days. Birmingham is also the home of the 16th Street Baptist Church, where in 1963, four young girls were killed in a bombing attributed to the KKK. It is also where Martin Luther King wrote the letter from a Birmingham jail in April of 63. This letter defends the strategy of nonviolent resistance to racism. We're walking along this rock trail at Rickwood Caverns. State Park. It's very pretty in here. This is a pretty deep hole along this path. All right, we're heading down the mountain. Lots of nice rock formations in here. figuring out where it was uh, he had to get out of it and started letting people come through in 1951 or two boy scout troop number 27 out of Fultondale Alabama came up here to Spelunk um, and when they got here they spent about a week and their troop leader was overwhelmed with how good this cave was. I don't know about the mayor y'all or like caves and uh, the different stuff in them. I'll also go over everything. We are mostly a limestone cave here at Ripley Caverns. Um, the whole 300 acres is said to be completely limestone oriented, which does mean that the water acts as a very weak acid and eats through. So over time, the water is going to seep through our limestone and drip off the side, creating stalactites like we see here. It's off the walls. So those are our different formations we'll see today. We were in danger of closing about four years ago and Christmas came kind of saved this place. So this right here is really interesting. A, it's just a, a, a pretty formation. It would have draped all the way down, but it was broken off. This is, however, the spot where the first underground marriage in Alabama. In 1971, um, you can still get married here today. Goes up maybe 30 feet and goes down maybe 30 feet. Um, oh, yeah. Pretty gorgeous structure. Up. It would have flowed in through the left and started pretty much up there and made its way down over years and years until it carved. I haven't gotten to go down here yet. I don't know how deep that truly is. I don't know if I ever find out, I'll let you know though. <laughs> After hours, this is where we come. We clock <laughs> out and come right back in the cave. When you see the black graffiti, mm -hmm. that was mostly done by the Boy Scouts that did this. So we treat that pretty much as history. Um, since they did the legwork and yeah. opened up this beautiful cave, most of what they did was put their name or put you know signs that go out or turns and such. Um, for a while, this was a self-guided tour. So there is a lot of vandalism. Um, cleaned up, a lot of it's cleaned up. You'll see a lot of uh, formations that have been broke off, sadly. And you give people an inch, they take a mile. This is the other whirlpool column. It's very tall as well, but it's gotten uh, a little more taken off of it. Oh, well, how long y'all gone from home? Y'all have a timetable or just kind of going where the wind goes? Yeah, yeah, just about two weeks. About two weeks. Filled in over the years, but that water came back through as a weak acid and ate through it. Um, so that's what we have today as a remainder of the sea life. We'll see a lot of fossils later, um, including shark teeth. It kind of looks like the Badlands of South Dakota up on the top. Mm -hmm. So that humming you hear is an awesome sound. That means we're going to have power the whole time we're down here. The generator. Our, our generator, it's right here on the other right side there. as well. Okay. Um, we know we're 125 feet below the surface because that's how far he had to drill to get those pipes in here. 
Um, let's see. Another thing people always ask me, they see cracks in the roof and they're like, oh, there's cracks, it's gonna fall. You are in much more danger if you walk into a room of a cave and see it's flat. That means the ground on top of it has not settled. Two newlyweds would jump off. And if they both made it, they were together in eternity. And if one made it, they would never find true love. Um, I don't really buy that. I think the better story <laughs> is that a coworker about four months ago dropped her phone and it got all the way down. <laughs> we, we retrieved it uh, successfully. It wasn't really? cracked, wasn't scratched. And then she dropped it about two feet behind you and broke it. So that's that. Yeah. So people have climbed down in there. I climbed down in there yesterday. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now I have to change that light after I finish y'all's tour. Which shouldn't be <laughs> that hard. I hope not. Climb up there, right? I got about <laughs> right there yesterday. Oh and wow, got that's pretty high. For me. These are crinoids. That's an Archimedes. Or no, is that a crinoid or an Archimedes? We'll see some Archimedes screws later. There's blastoids in here. Hmm. Um, all this stuff kind of puts in perspective the, the food chain that was in here. This was a lot of your plant life, and then we had fish and crayfish that still live in here. They would eat this, and then bigger fish to the sharks, and on and on and on. Um, uh, but this room is just really interesting because there's so much history just in that section. Um, and then you get to up here, and you see how powerful that river was. Yeah. With lines that cut in. Um, we estimate that that river at some points moved about 35 or 40 miles an hour. As far as like dating it, I was my first clue. Let me get through my 40 degree and maybe I'll have a better answer. <laughs> no. So this right here is going to be our first natural bridge. Um, like I was showing you guys later, you pointed out that layer of sediment. Um, this is the same kind of stuff, which is what leads me to think that's iron ore back there. Um, this didn't get washed away or eroded because of the iron. Um, it's stronger and you can withstand that pH balance. So it's our first of three natural bridges. Mm -hmm. We're very, very positive that from here, wherever this is fed from, leads into a formation we'll see later, which then feeds into our underground lake. Um, we do not know where our water supply comes from. This is a piece of drapery. It is about 30 feet. Oh, wow. Absolutely beautiful. Love it. And we always tell people, whoever names, uh, named cave stuff was kind of hungry, because that white stuff you see there is a collection of minerals and it's called cave popcorn. <laughs> and then right here, this little transparent area. Oh. So those are really, really thin pieces of drapery. Um, we put that light there so you see just how thin and translucent mm -hmm. they are. They're a little less than a half inch thick. Oh. Um, takes them a long time. They're called cave bacon, truly. <laughs> and that's, that's their scientific name somehow. Um, and then up top, we talked about stalactites, but a lot of these, especially right here, are soda pop straws. Um, before they turn into stalactites, they are hollow, so we call them soda pops, mm -hmm. and eventually they'll form and cap together. And then I always play people the theme song. <laughs> so, whenever I want to smoke on the water, I'll be able to play that. This will be the last little natural bridge we go under. A little nice one. Blew into my chest trying to get out and bounced and he landed in my hands. <laughs> Just kind of got up and flew off. Uh, he didn't bother to hurt me. They're very sweet. I think some of these bats are kind of used to the people. Um, I think they've gotten people all day long. To it. Oh, that's certainly still working there. That's actually one of the bigger bats I've seen. He's about two to long. Yeah, we're about to get into what I was talking about. Up here is the actual door that would have been the end of the cave uh, the mine shaft. But it's really cool that that would have been the end. They blasted through this stuff, and yeah. to me, this is the most beautiful part of the cave right here. Mm -hmm. There's about three to 5,000 different formations in here. Mm -hmm. um, just gorgeous. Absolutely the prettiest room. Oh, wow, this is nice right here. Yeah. Oh, this is pretty. Wow. It is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Our favorite room. That we have your room. This is our queen's room. Since we have the king back there, we have the queen. Over here. <coughs> now we do have some interesting looking formations in here. We call that the queen's cake. It looks like a big old birthday mm -hmm. cake. Um, What's well, a cake without wine or a party without wine? So there's a little corkscrew. Uh, <laughs> I want to know how that formed. I don't know the science behind that. So we tell kids this is an octopus, but adults see a little something different. They see like a, two little bats that live up here. There's one. 
And so it's yeah. one in there, yeah. yeah. And I startled one back off that way the other day. And I think he lives right there. That was my friend. They come back to the same place, you think? Usually, they don't move far. <laughs> I, I watched him land right there. I mean, that's him. That's the bat I held the other day. Whew. Come here and taking those bats. <laughs> and mostly what they've said is it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of breeding of the healthy bats yeah, and a ton yeah. of breeding of the sick bats and see if their bodies can <laughs> um, basically make a cure. Because right now it's infecting about 80% of North American bats. Three come out. You got 25 feet back and 60 feet deep. Um, before he had an equipment malfunction, he came back up and said he'd be back the next week, and we haven't seen him since. Um, so we have no oh. clue how deep it goes, or how far back. Why did he not come back? I guess you don't know. But I thought it was the most dangerous recreational sport you can do. Yes. Thanks for watching. If you got this far, you'll want to know we have a few more Alabama adventures to share. Next is the Ave Maria Grotto. It was an amazing place we just happened to find. Subscribe to follow along on our adventures. Thanks.